Welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, we're going to take a look at the real number system and then focus in on rational numbers. So what is the real number system? Well, the real numbers are all the numbers that you can think of. They include irrational numbers and rational numbers. So let's take a closer look. So we're going to start off with our most inner circle on the right side, and we have our natural numbers. So the natural numbers are the counting numbers, what you learned when you probably two or three or maybe four years old. So these are one, two, three, and so on. And then we, if we go one outer circle out, we have something called the whole numbers. And the only difference between a whole number and a natural number is that whole number also includes the number zero. But if we still have one, two, three, and so on. All right, then probably in about late elementary school, in grade six or seven, you were introduced to integers. And the integers include negative numbers. So I'm going to put dot, 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 because it keeps going on to the negatives. So we have negative three, negative two, negative one, but it still includes zero, one, two, three, and so on. So notice that as we go out in layers, it includes all the numbers that were in the inner side of the inner circles. And then finally, all of these numbers, the natural, the whole, and the integers, they make up our rational numbers. But there are other numbers besides integers, whole and natural, that are part of the rational number system. So we can have repeating decimals. So any of the numbers that repeat, such as 0 0.5 with a repeat, those are called uh, repeating decimals and they are rational numbers. We also have fractions. So any number that can be written as a fraction is also called a rational number, such as 5 over 9. And then finally, we also have our terminating decimals. So terminating decimal means that the decimal stops. It doesn't repeat. So an example of this would be 0 0.5. So all of these numbers in this box are the rational numbers. So what's an irrational number? So an irrational number is anything that doesn't satisfy what a rational number is. So that means that it can't repeat, can't be written as a fraction, doesn't terminate. So probably the most common number that you know is pi, since pi is equal to 3.14, but it doesn't stop there. It actually keeps going, so it goes 1, 5, and on and on and on. Another irrational number is the square root of 2, since that also doesn't terminate. And if you type in the square root of 2 into a calculator, you will see that you get 1.4142, and that also keeps on going on forever. Now, the rational numbers, we, um, in the mathematics world, we abbreviate it with the letter Q. It is any number that can be written in the form m over n, where m and n are both integers, but n, our denominator, cannot equal 0, because we can't divide by 0. So all of the numbers that are in the box on the right side can all be written as a fraction. So all the integers, the whole, and the natural can all be written as a fraction by placing a 1 in the denominator. And then I'm going to show you how to write 0 0.5 repeating and um, as a fraction as well. And we know that 0 0.5 can also be written as a half. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. So let's change the following fractions to a decimal and indicate what part of the real number system they belong. So 100 divided by 25, we can see that is the same as 4. And it doesn't really have a decimal. You could put 4.0, but it's not necessary. And so based on our real number system and our rational number box here, we can see that 4 is natural. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer. And then therefore it is also rational. 
All right, our next one is negative 12 divided by 2. So that is equal to negative 6. Because it's a negative number, the only thing that it can be is it can be an integer. And all integers are also rational. All right, finally, we have 2 over 3. So 2 over 3, if we type that out, or if you've memorized this, this is 0 0.6 repeating. And it keeps on going, so 0 0.66 on and on. We can also write this as 0 0.6 with a line on the top to show that it's repeating. And it's not an integer. It is only a rational number. And rational numbers, remember, I'll just write this to remind you that they can be repeating decimals. All right, the last one is 5 over 8. Okay, so to recall, I'm going to show you how to do long division. So I'll put this on the right side here. So if 5 divided by 8, 8 goes on the outside, 5 goes on the inside. And that's where our decimal is. So we're going to add some zeros so that we can do the long division. So 8 doesn't go into 5. We place 0 on the top. So now we're going to check how many times 8 goes into 50. So 8 goes into 50 six times. Now notice that my decimal is here. So I'm going to bring that up and place the decimal here. Oops, sorry. And then we have 6. We're going to multiply that by 8, which is 48. We write that underneath the 50. And we're going to subtract. And then we get 2. So now we bring down the next 0. So 8 goes into 20 two times. We place it at the top beside the 6. 2 times 8 is 16. We subtract again. And now we get 4. Bring down the last 0. Or we can keep adding more if, it, if we would like to. Uh, but 8 actually goes into 40 five times, so we can actually stop here. 5 times 8 is 40, and when we subtract, we get a remainder of 0. So that means that 5 eighths is the same as the decimal number, 0 0.625. Now, we can see that's not natural, a whole, or an integer. It is a decimal or a fraction, so that is called a rational number. And this is what we call a terminating decimal. All right, so from this example, we can see that rational numbers include all the integers and fractions and terminating decimals. or terminating decimal numbers, and also repeating decimal numbers. And that is the rational number system.